The coalition programme for government announced today looks like an election manifesto, but who voted for it? Welcome to Question Time. With me here in Richmond Park, the new Conservative Home Secretary, Theresa May. Nick Clegg's predecessor as leader of the Liberal Democrats, Ming Campbell. The Europe Minister in Gordon Brown's government, Caroline Flint. The Director of Liberty, Shamish Akrabati. And the author, Douglas Murray. Welcome to Richmond Park, which was, of course, the constituency taken by Zach Goldsmith for the Conservatives after a really ferocious battle with the Liberal Democrats and uh, two parties which are at war during the election and are now in a happy coalition. Tonight we're going to try and find out what the voters make of the so-called new politics. Our first question from Fiona Sumner, please. Fiona Sumner. Good evening. Was Nick Clegg right to defend the decision under the Human Rights Act to allow two Pakistani terror suspects to remain in Britain despite an assessment that they pose a serious threat to the public. Douglas Murray. No, he wasn't right. Um, the facts of this case are complex at the moment um, because of the complex nature of the legal entanglement into which this country has got itself. Um, I would just put it this way. The uh, uh, Commission decided these two men uh, were actively involved with al-Qaeda. The security services cannot, they say, deliver this evidence in open court. It was delivered in closed session there. Um, and so we're in a bind. And I just put it as follows. We're in a bind because we apparently cannot extradite these two young men, Pakistani nationals, who are wanting to harm, we're told, are wanting to harm people in this country. We're not able to extradite them to Pakistan, their own country, in case they are tortured there. I would just put it this way. Uh, we are now going to have to pay for two al-Qaeda associates to stay in this country to protect their human rights, defending their rights, I believe, over the rights of the people of this country. I think you have to look at this perfectly plainly, and I would say you can't put it any stronger than this. Any society that wanted to survive would not behave like this, would not defend their enemies over their own people, would not protect their enemies better than they protect their own people. But it would send no them away regardless, would send uh, them away regardless. regardless of and what happens. If, if the new Home Secretary uh, has uh, any sense about this, and I very much hope she has, she will realise that no government that wants to survive would behave like All this. Right. It is preposterous to, to do that. Well, uh, Theresa May, Nick Clegg said um, the law is very clear, it's wrong to deport people where they could be seriously mistreated or tortured or indeed killed and this government will continue to operate on these standards. Your Home Secretary, do you think he was right to say that? Well, that was the decision of the, that was taken by SIAC, this, uh, the body that looked into this particular case of these two individuals. Um, government had applied for them to be deported. Uh, the result of the, that came out of the, uh, of the uh, case in the hearing was that, uh, yes, they were a threat to national security, that has already been uh, referred to, but that, no, they could not be deported to uh, Pakistan because of the uh, treatment that they would receive there. Um, obviously, from the government's point of view, uh, what we now do is take all measures possible to ensure that these individuals cannot engage in terrorist activity and that we ensure the safety of the public. That's but, the first... But you wanted, that's them, the first... you wanted them to be deported because that was why they were having the case in the first place. And you the, said you were disappointed in the verdict. I was disappointed in the verdict. The, uh, I think technically the application obviously had been made... In, uh, the case had been brought up before the election, so under the, uh, under the previous government. But, yes, there is an issue here, but I think we mustn't see this as a question of national security versus civil liberties, which is how this argument is sometimes presented. Actually, national security, maintaining national security, enables us to enjoy our civil liberties. And what we as a coalition government will be looking at is ensuring that, yes, we can do both of those things, that we can maintain national security, but that also we recognise the importance of civil liberties and the importance of maintaining people's freedoms. <coughs> now, there is something that we can be doing, and we will be doing as a government in, in relation to cases like this, which is to be pursuing uh, further discussions with governments like the government of Pakistan, mm -hmm. to be looking for the sorts of guarantees that would 
um, not be judged by the government, but would be judged by this, uh, this body, by, effectively by a court, to uh, uh, enable people to be... Can I, can I draw back you to back Pakistan? to what Fiona Sumner asked, which is, was Nick Clegg, Deputy Prime Minister, right to defend the decision that was made to allow the terror suspects to stay here? Or Nick, not. Nick Clegg was right to say that as a country we want to ensure that we maintain civil liberties and people's freedoms. What we want to do is to be able, though, obviously, to maintain national security. But as I say, these are not opposite parts of an argument. National security is what enables us to defend civil liberties. And in the programme that we have outlined today, that we've set out today, the programme for the coalition government over the next five years, we're absolutely clear that there are many ways in which we want to enhance people's civil liberties, in which the Labour government was taking people's freedoms away, in which the state was becoming too much of an interfering body in people's lives. And we do need to roll back certain aspects of the, of the state in this country, and, and uh, like scrapping ID cards, right. in order to maintain right. well, their Go there. Let's just stick with this case. Hold on a moment, uh, Douglas Murray. Ming Campbell, Theresa May said she was disappointed with the court ruling. Were you disappointed with it? I was disappointed that the uh, position of the government was not able to be upheld. But, of course, what Nick Clegg was doing was he was, if you like, celebrating the integrity of the process. And that's a very important point. Because Sorry, human... when you say that the government... Be... You, you thought they should have been expelled. You thought the there... government was right to seek their expulsion. There were... Of course, was quite entitled to seek their, to seek their expulsion. And why, right to, why, right why, to do so. Why? Because there was a colourable evidence that they were a threat to security. But the point I want to make is this. Uh, human rights uh, are not something you select on a Tuesday and ignore on a Wednesday. Human rights are indivisible. And if we want to start to get into the business of choosing the circumstances in which we apply human rights, then we open the door to authoritarianism and to people being discriminated against. <laughs> and to people being discriminated against by reason of their colour, their ethnic background, the membership of perhaps, group. perhaps even uh, their sexual orientation. Now, I wish Pakistan... Uh, was a country where we could safely send people like this, but it isn't. And as Nick Clegg quite rightly pointed out, it's not just a question of inhumane behaviour or torture, it's the possibility of death. This is a country which has consist consistently rejected the death penalty. Since I've been in the House of Commons in the last 23 years, every time it's come up, the House of Commons has rejected the death penalty. It is wholly inconsistent with that moral stance to say that we won't impose the death penalty, but we will send people who come through our judicial process to a country where we know it's But then I don't understand why you supported the application to have them deported in the first place, well, if you well, say that. And why, why, well, why, because, why, you, why because, you agree with Theresa May that it was disappointing that the court ruled they couldn't be deported? Because, you think the exact opposite. Because we have a process. And what happened here was that these arguments were put before the court and the court decided... But if you'd been in the oh, court, sorry, you would have said, you would have said these no, people I, mustn't be deported. I, I, no, you'd no, have no, defended I, them. I, I would have balanced, as any judge must, the competing uh, priorities of the fact that these men are alleged to be uh, harmful to uh, national security with the equally powerful competing priority that if they were sent home, they were liable to be killed. All right. Now, that is the job of the judge. It's the job of the process. And if we start interfering in it, well, the Home Secretary or Member of Parliament, then we will seriously damage the integrity of that process and we will inevitably lead to circumstances in which human rights are applied selectively and not universally. It's called the Universal Declaration right. of Human Rights. Let's Why? Because of its universality. Thank you. Let Yes, I think the judgment was clear that they were Al-Qaeda affiliated and you can't talk about human rights in the absence of human responsibilities. Absolutely. Absolutely. What, would, uh, what, what would you like to have seen happen? Well, well, I think there should be some consideration for deportation to a country where they can be safely looked after or perhaps even back to some Al-Qaeda base. I mean, there's going to be huge... <laughs> <laughs> there's, okay. there's going to be... 